Good morning, boys and girls. Uh, how are you? And how have you been? Uh, my name is Teacher Tom, and today uh, I'll be leading you in the big Bible story. Before we start, uh, I would like us to start with a word of prayer. So let's pray. Our dear loving Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the boys and girls who are watching and listening everywhere. We pray that, Lord, as we even go through our lesson today, that you'll teach us, you'll instruct us, and uh, you'll show us how to live our lives depending on you. We thank you because we know you hear us. It's in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Uh, now, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you remember what we did last week. Uh, Teacher Eric taught us about Isaiah. Do you remember? Yes. He taught us about how God called Isaiah. And uh, today, um, I'll be talking about Isaiah uh, responding to that call and he started doing what God had called him to do. Uh, if you remember our timeline chart, um, we, we, we've been uh, talking about the prophets, Joel, and now we are here. So we are here still in the Old Testament and uh, we'll be learning more about uh, the New Testament, what God, God's plan he had and uh, we'll be talking about Emmanuel, God with us, uh, here in Isaiah. So I hope all of us have our Bibles. I brought mine. I brought one that is called Salitis Kids Bible. And I would like us to turn to the book of Isaiah. I would like us to go to chapter 7. Are we there? Um, I'll just read a, a, a few verses and uh, I'll request you to read the rest and uh, I'll tell it in a story. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 7 verses 1. When Ahaz, son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, was king of Judah, king of Rezin of Aram and Pekah, son of Ramalia, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem, but they could not overpower it. Verse 2, now the house of David was told, Aram has allied itself with Ephraim, so the hearts of Ahaz, his people, were shaken as the trees of uh, the forest uh, are shaken by the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, go out, you and your son, Shia Jash Jashub, to meet Ahaz at the end of the aqueduct of the upper pool, on the road to the washer's, washerman's field, say to him, be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Do not lose heart be, because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood, because of the fierce anger of raising an arm, and of the son of Ram, Ramalia. Verse 5, Aram, Ephraim, and Ramalia's son have plotted your ruin, saying, Let us invade Judah, let us tear it apart, and divide it among ourselves, and make the son of Tabil king over it. Yet this is what the Sovereign Lord says, It will not take place, it will not happen. For the head of Aram is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is only raising. With 65 years, Ephraim will be too shattered to be a people. The head of Ephraim in Samaria and the head of Samaria is only Ramallah's son. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. Verse 10, and again the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in, in the deepest depth or in the highest heights. But Ahad said, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David, 
Is it not enough to try the patient of men? Will you try the patient of God, of my God also? Verse 14, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with the child and will give, the, will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. He will eat curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. But before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will, laid, will be laid west. Uh, now we, uh, we come to the first mission Isaiah had. And um, here I, God sends Isaiah to confront the king of Judah, King Ahaz. And um, you see God telling um, Isaiah to tell Ahaz that um, to trust him and not to be shaken. Because the, the kingdom, the Israel and uh, the Syrian, the other kingdoms had ganged up to, to come and attack Judah. And when the people heard and even the king heard about it, they were all shaken. The way, the way wind shakes trees. You can imagine that fear. And in our story today, we see God asking Isaiah to tell King Ahaz not to fear, but to have faith in what God promises. Even us, as, as children, as boys and girls, we are supposed to have faith. And we see the first mention of um, what, what is coming, uh, what God promises to come. We see God promising um, a Messiah uh, in verses um, <coughs> in verses 14 God says therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign the virgin will be with a child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel Emmanuel means God with us so we when we face any of the any of the problems we face in our uncertain world today we can always trust in certainty of god because we know god is very certain in uh, everything that he does so uh, we see the call of isaiah um, isaiah responding and going forward to do what God called him to do. And uh, just the way God called Isaiah, we are called to spread the good news. Are you spreading the good news to your friends in school, to your friends at home, to your neighbors? Are you that vessel that God can use? And um, we remember what teacher Eric said, when God calls us, we need to respond and we respond in faith. So we, 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 with, with, with our lesson today, we see God confronting, Isaiah, Isaiah confronting Ahaz and uh, telling him what plan God had for the people of Judah and what God's plan was for his kingdom. Um, uh, we see uh, again Ahaz not trusting at all at what um, the prophet Isaiah was telling him about what God had said. And uh, we even come across ourselves, we don't, sometimes we doubt, we, we doubt God's promises, we doubt what God, God has promised us, but we know uh, when we have faith, God fulfills his promises. So today I'll ask you, uh, have you trusted God in what he says he is? And uh, have you believed in all his promises? He promised to send Jesus to die for us on the cross and it came to pass. 
and we, we, we know that particular knowledge about um, the cross is foolish to the world, but when you take it by faith, when you believe, then you know you've received that salvation that God has promised. Because we are unable to help ourselves, we are unable to control what we, uh, what we, uh, we, we are limited. We are limited in everything that we do. But we know God is above everything, is supreme over our being. So to, to, today I'll ask you uh, that uh, you need to put your, all your trust in God. You need to trust him in everything that you do. You trust him with your lives. You trust him with our, 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 our being and our everything that we do. So, are you looking for a sign about what God, if for you to trust God, or will you take His word by faith? So. Uh, that's a question that you need to ask yourself and meditate upon it. And um, we know God, God never fails. It's God with us. He's always, always around, always guiding us in everything that we do. And we know that's the name that was given to Jesus, God with us, Emmanuel. So we know as um, our memory verse says, that we are all like sheep, uh, have gone astray, each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And that is the manual that we are talking about in this. So, uh, do you remember our memory verse? Um, Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6, <coughs> it says we are all like sheep, we've gone astray. Each of us has turned to, his, to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, 6. This means, some, humanly speaking, we, we have a tendency of uh, going our own way, not God's way. So we need to always trust God in everything that we do. And uh, as uh, we see what, what uh, Isaiah prophesied about the kingdom of Judah, it came to pass, and uh, the, kingdom, the kingdoms that had ganged up to come and uh, attack it, it didn't come to pass. They were all defeated, and what God had promised came to pass. So my prayer today is that uh, you will trust in God in everything that he, he says you'll do. And uh, despite the uncertain things that happen in our lives today, um, we know God's purpose always prevails. His, his ways are not our ways and he's always at work even in uh, uncertain times like today where there is coronavirus and all the many things that are happening in our lives today. So I'll, I'll ask you that uh, we continue trusting God, we continue reading his, his word because he's revealed himself in, his, in the Bible. He, everything about God is in the Bible, it's here. So uh, I'll ask ourselves to continue trusting him and reading his word. Thank you and God bless you until we see you again. Uh -huh. I'm joined by one of the toddlers and uh, I would like us to, to pray now to conclude with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promise in your word that you'll always be with us, Emmanuel, God with us. And Lord, we know you'll always be with us when we depend on you. you are, you're, nothing gets you off guard, nothing surprises you in our world, our being, everything, Lord, we commit it to you. I pray for each and every boy and girl at home watching that, Lord, you'll guide them in everything that 
they are going through now. You guide them even as they study at home. You guide them as even they depend on you. We pray that Lord you bless they are going out and they are coming in and you'll be with them always. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Mm -hmm.